Hi friends, and welcome back. First on the chopping block is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Isington. No spoilers in this part, they'll come later, and I'll warn you in advance if you haven't read the series yet. In this story, we meet Asha, Davian, and Wur, who are three friends who all have access to a highly feared magical ability. Uh, They're called gifted and can manipulate essence to their will. After a gruesome war that occurred before their birth, uh, any individual who has access to this magical ability are born to four tenants and to the will of administrators who are non-magical individuals in a position of power and policing um, over the gifted. The four tenets state that the gifted are not to use essence with the intent to harm or hinder the non-gifted. They are not to use essence with the intent to deceive, intimidate, or otherwise work to the detriment of non-gifted, to do no harm to administrators or gifted, physical or otherwise, and to swear to follow the orders of all administrators. In addition to the gifted, there are also augurs who are more feared due to their past historical abuse of power. Um, They have an additional set of magical gifts as well as being able to utilize essence. There are also individuals called shadows who have been stripped of their ability to um, use essence or sense it. So they were gifted and then they become shadow. The story sets it on its path um, when Davian realizes that he has auger abilities and his two friends, Asha and Wur, are swept away in the plot with him. I gave this book an overall rating of 2.8 Um, which was disappointing because I really, really wanted to like it. For Spontaneity, it rated a 2. I started this book sometime in mid-November, but I didn't finish it until January. I kept picking it up, uh, reading a chapter two, and then walking away. This book came very close to joining the Did Not Finish Graveyard. What made it difficult for me to um, read the book was just the characterizations and a resulting lack of emotional connection. I found that the three main characters, Davy and Asha and Wur, all had such similar personalities and motivations that they didn't vary much at all as the plot unraveled. Um, later on in the story, you meet Caden, who was interesting to read, but was also difficult to connect with. Um, emotionality, as a result, rated a one star. Uh, Kill them all, put me out of my misery. Characterization, a two star. No one changed. They all started out interesting and with a lot of potential but as the story went on no one really transformed or grew or regressed at all but what saved the book for me was the plot Um, There are a lot of intricate little mysteries along the way that kept me wondering what would happen. Um, And however, it was not a satisfying read because I only cared about what happened and not really who was involved. 
it almost felt like reading uh, like an extended news article. Okay, so some spoilers ahead. You've been warned. The first few chapters did grab me. Um, The concept that if you were not powerful enough or if you broke the tenet somehow that you could be forever cut off from using essence was gripping. Um, Right away, there's urgency, especially when it's revealed that Davian cannot use essence and his exams are coming up. So right away, there's that curiosity as a reader um, as to how he's going to get out of being made into a shadow. The massacre scene is also compelling, and again, it is one of the reasons that I ended up finishing the book ultimately, and uh, later ended up finishing the series. It did its job in setting the tone for the book and for the read, and that no one is safe, um, that what we think may happen could be completely derailed, that there will be bloodshed, and that you can trust nobody. However, shortly after I finished those earlier scenes, uh, I started disconnecting from the characters. I guess I felt like a cast of teenagers and young adults would be more emotional, and really, regardless of age, people would be more emotionally and psychologically affected by the traumatic experiences that they go through in this book. However, they seem to kind of move past things pretty quickly and go from chasing one piece of information to the next without a lot of, um, like, internal battle. Also, there were common themes of mistrust in people and in the information uh, that's being presented that made me kind of wary to connect with any of the secondary characters as well. There were several instances where a character had a secondary life or name or was undercover and after a while I found myself questioning every character, every motivation, and I just wasn't ever really surprised when someone was discovered as having an alias. Overall, I I would suggest to read this book once. I think also what possibly created a bias in my expectation was the cover of the book. Um, it said, love the wheel of time. Yes, which I do. This is about to become your new favorite series. And yeah, I understand the whole don't judge a book by its cover. But that is a bold statement to put on a cover of a book. And I mean, did it work? Yes. Did I buy the book? Yes. Did I read the book? Yes. But do I feel used? Also, yes. Next up will be an echo of things to come. Thanks for watching. Bye, friends.